Good evening. This is the Spencer Special Town Meeting of November 15th, 2015. My name is Peter Adams and I am your town moderator. I am advised that we have a quorum and call the meeting to order, waiving the reading of the return of the warrant and noting for the record that it has been served as required by law. For those of you who are willing and able, please rise and join your fellow town meeting members in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing thereafter for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in a moment of silence and respect for all of those victims of others' intolerance and cruelty in many parts of the world, and most especially for those who have died in the torrent of inhumanity we have witnessed over the last few weeks in the Sinai Peninsula, Lebanon, Paris, and Nigeria. Thank you. Please be seated. Every day we make history in the conduct of our normal affairs. Tonight we will make history as we exercise our right of self-determination to settle the affairs of our town government by consensus as a free and equal people. In this, the 262nd year of our existence as a body politic. Our decisions will be chronicled and preserved. In future days, Others will reflect on our actions through the lenses of time and judgment to discern the jewels worthy of inclusion into the lore of our combined experiences as a town, a state, or a nation. And yet, though we are the creators of this history, by necessity, we often fail to realize the historical significance of what we do. I believe there is no better example of this than what transpired on this date 152 years ago, November 19, 1863, when President Abraham Lincoln rose before 9,000 people convened in a semicircle around a platform as part of the dedication of the Soldiers National Cemetery at Gettysburg, put on his steel frame, frame glasses, and delivered a two-minute speech for the ages one that would ultimately define and be deemed the guiding force of this republic, that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. When he finished the audience, having just endured a two-hour address by a noted orator and stunned by the brevity of Lincoln's words, stood transfixed. A pause followed only when Lincoln turned to his chair. As he did so, he remarked to an aide that the speech was a flat failure and the people are disappointed. In, historical, in the historical perspective, we know that it wasn't and they weren't. Tonight and in nights of future years, may we honor the spirit of that now famous address by governing wisely in behalf of all of the people as we continue this grand experiment in governance by and for the people. We give thanks tonight for Spencer Cable Access for their continued support of your right to know through telecast of this and other governmental meetings. Excuse me, on the stage, on stage left is the select board, Gary Woodbury Chair, John Stevens Vice Chair, Chris Woodbury Clerk, Tony Pepe Member, Bo Fritz member. Uh, to, to the rear of the uh, select board is the town administrator, Adam Gaudet, and town council, Stanley Weinberg. On stage right is the finance committee, and Mary Brainy will introduce its members. Good evening. Uh, to my left is Paul McLaughlin, vice chair of the finance committee, and then Chris Bowen, Tom Parker, Bill Wall, Nancy Herholtz, who is the clerk. Thank you. Seated to my left is my town meeting colleague, 
Town Clerk Laura Torty. The chair extends the gratitude of the town to Julie Parento and John Damaris for their past service on the Finance Committee and extends an invitation to those of you who may be interested in joining the committee. We have two vacancies to fill. If you are of such a mind, please contact the town administrator or me directly by email at adamsinspencer at gmail.com. Ground rules. Questions of parliamentary procedure are decided by reference to town meeting time, a handbook of parliamentary law. On articles presented for your consideration, they will be summarized by me, a motion will be read, the Finance Committee will make a recommendation, the moving party will speak, and then any other speakers may address the meeting. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's difficult to hear in the back of the auditorium. You don't want me to start all over again, do you? Let me get closer to the mic. Is that better? <laughs> to be recognized, just shout, Mr. Moderator, raise your hand. We'll make a lot of noise so we know where you are. And you can speak. We'll have one speaker at a time up here. The ground rules for addressing the meeting, you must use the microphone in the front. You must identify yourself and give your home address. Amending an article. That must be done in writing and seconded. We have motion forms here at the desk if you wish to make an amendment to any article which is presented. Amendments must then be decided before the main question is voted. That being said, uh, the chairman recognizes Adam Gaudet, town administrator, who will give us a short presentation on comprehensive road project the town is considering undertaking. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Again, my name is Adam Gaudet. I'm the town administrator, and the gentlemen that are walking up with me are members of a subcommittee, uh, the Financial Management Planning Committee, and they have been charged by the Board of Selectmen to study long-range uh, financial issues for the town. Uh, to my right is Tony Pepe. He's the chair of the committee. He is a member of the Board of Selectmen. To his right is John Stevens. He's also a member of the Board of Selectmen. To his right is Paul McLaughlin. He's on the Finance Committee. To my left is Tom Parker, also on the Finance Committee. And then Rich Hebson, who couldn't be here, he's on our Capital Committee. Still can't hear me? All right. Um, so I wanted to just make a brief announcement. I didn't want to make a big presentation or have a question and answer period, but the gentleman behind me wanted you to know the work that they're working on, along with myself and staff, Steven Tyler, who's our Utilities and Facilities Superintendent, and several consultants. We are currently analyzing uh, uh, the road conditions of our town. Uh, as you know, we have some roads, uh, that some more notable than others, uh, that have uh, certainly worn condition and are, are less than uh, the condition that we'd like them to be. So we've hired some consultants to analyze the conditions of the road, uh, we've looking at different scenarios in terms of making improvements to those roads. Uh, you have a handout with you that a, 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 has a couple of graphs on here. I just wanted to uh, just uh, point that out and, and uh, have you take that home with you. And if you have any questions, my, my email is on here as well as a website link that will point you to a lot of information that we're putting together uh, via consultants uh, regarding funding, regarding road conditions, comparisons uh, of our roads to other communities, et cetera. Uh, so I'm not going to go in too much detail with this, but some of the numbers that we're looking at are, are quite daunting. Uh, some preliminary numbers we've looked at for the conditions of the roads in terms of a backlog to get them where we'd like them to be are, are certainly in the millions, uh, up, and, up and around 20 to 30 million. We only get about $500,000 per year from our state uh, through the Chapter 90 program, which certainly we do our best, and you see some of the activities that are going around town now, our, our, our utilization of those funds, but certainly they're not enough uh, to get us to where we want to be. So the graph on your left shows you a, a number right in the middle of the graph, uh, has varying road conditions. The number 51.2 is uh, our consultant pointed out to us on the scale of 1 to 100. Everybody can relate to what that is in the classroom, 51.2 is certainly not, uh, not in a very high level and 
uh, a failing number, if you will. Uh, some of the numbers of other towns around us, Webster is in, has a 70, I think, um, 64, West Boylston and Millbury at 60. So we're below our neighbors, we know that. We need to put some funds to these projects. Uh, we can't rely solely on uh, state funding. It's very hard to do and, and to keep up with the backlog. If you look on the graph on the bottom right, you'll see the black line represents the history or the trend that we're going on, and it's, it, you can see it's below 55, and it's continually going down. If we stay with the funding that we have now, which is the purple line, you can see that if we continue with just relying on Chapter 90, we're heading towards even a further uh, grade of, of despair, if you will. So we're looking at some of the colored lines above in terms of different funding scenarios, in terms of how that would improve our overall conditions of the road. Obviously, we have uh, you know, many people that commute. We have people that come into town to work. Uh, we have, uh, obviously, our school buses and the public safety to worry about. So uh, I'm sure everyone knows the conditions of our roads can have do some work. We'd like you to pay attention to some of the work that these gentlemen are doing. We'll have more information, more announcements. We'll have some public hearings as the budget season begins after the first of the year. So we hope you uh, would come and join us and give us some feedback on some of the information that we're providing you. Uh, look again at our website, that the link is on here. Uh, and also you can email me or stop in any time and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, so I'm not gonna take any questions, but I will stick around at the end of the meeting if anyone would like to come up and just have a, a discussion uh, and stay tuned and, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. Article one. Article one concerns the payment of a bill from the prior fiscal year, and it's to appropriate $90 to pay a bill for laboratory quality, wa water quality testing for the water department, and to meet the appropriation by transfer within the department. It requires a nine-tenths majority. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article One as printed in the warrant. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approving. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those that are opposed? I see none opposed, and the chair declares that passed by a unanimous vote of 100 to nothing. Article two. Article two is a, uh, an article to raise and appropriate additional funds with regard to the Smith Regional Agricultural High School tuition account and transportation account. Each year we vote on this article at the annual town meeting in May, but the bills don't come in until after the fiscal year starts, and there's always adjustment Motion I have is to waive the reading and approve Article 2 as printed in the warrant. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Mr. Pepe. Mr. Moderator, um, just a reminder that this is something that we are legally bound to pay the bill for for um, uh, curriculum that we do not offer in this district. We are bound to pay uh, tuition and transportation expenses. Questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you, those opposed? And the chair declares that the ayes have it by majority vote. Now, Article 3 and Article 4 are going to be discussed. Article 3 and Article 4 will be discussed together. The first one relates to rescinding Article 14, uh, Article 14, I believe it is, yes, from the annual town meeting, which was the annual budget for the town. And then Article 4 is going to go through a reappropriation of sums. And this is an adjustment that we do every year. In most years, we can do this with one or two lines. However, this year it's become quite complex. And we have about 20 adjustments to do. So what we're going to do first is to take the uh, Article 3, which calls for rescission 
of the budget. And, and if that passes, we will then have discussion on that article and also on the substance of Article 4, which are the adjustments. And then we will turn to a vote on Article 4. So Article 3, the motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 3 as printed in a warrant it requires a majority vote. The motion is by Mr. Pepe and seconded by Mr. Fritz. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 3 contingent upon um, approval of Article 4. Okay. Mr. Gaudet. I think, we'll, all right, we'll take a vote on that now. All those in favor of rescinding our, um, the Article 14, the annual town meeting vote from May of 2015, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed, uh, the ayes have it. Carries by a majority vote. And now we will go to Article 4. And Article 4 is the adjustment. Each of you has this packet in the back of your warrant which are all the financial figures that Mr. Gaudet is going to dazzle you with in just a moment. Sure. What we're basically doing here is a new fiscal 2016 budget to the general government, which essentially raises the overall budget by about $104,000. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 4 as printed in the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Pepe, seconded by Mr. Fritz. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval of Article 4. Thank you. Mr. Gaudet. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So I'm going to discuss a page that's in your packet that's uh, just the first page behind the warrant. It's entitled Re Revisions to Previously Approved Budget for Fiscal Year 2016. That's what it says on the top. It has a spreadsheet with a chart of numbers in the middle. I'm going to be working off of that page. So if anybody can't find it, please let me know. You have your warrant, and then after the signature page, you should see a page with a bunch of numbers. On the very top, it says revisions to the previously approved budget for 2016. I'm going to hold it up now, and if anybody can't see, please let me know. Page 8, eighth page in your packet. Thank you. So as the moderator said, we uh, sometimes have not had to do this, but we have the last few years due to the fact that there has been multiple changes that come after the fact when we approve our budget in May. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, the budget that we do in May falls before the fiscal year starts on July 1st, and we need to do that, obviously, so that we can move forward with our operations and the next sub subsequent fix fiscal year and have authorization from you folks to begin spending money. Uh, what we do in the fall, uh, because we have this opportunity for uh, a second look at the budget, we tend to adjust our numbers based on new information that's come out or information that has become more accurate. For example, our state aid, we, uh, when we close our warrant in April for the annual town meeting in May, uh, the state has not yet finalized their budget. They don't do that until after July 1st, and the governor has 10 days and usually signs it in mid-July. So with that, and some other revenues we've uh, been able to identify as changes or more accurate, the very top four or five light items that you see where it says gray revenue adjustments, those are adjustments that we are making in our budget uh, because of information that has now become before us that is more accurate. The first one is new growth. New growth is any money that's come onto the tax rolls due to new construction that occurred in 2015, and now we are allowed to apply that to our uh, estimated tax levy coming in 2016. That number is not approved by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue until September or, uh, or October or so. So we had a guess of 75,000 back in the spring. The Department of Revenue approved us of 109. We now have almost $35,000 additional funds to spend. Uh, the second item is the local aid or cherry sheet. It's a very small change, but it was a change, and that's our state aid. Uh, the third item is called bond premium reserves. That's related to the debt that we have. That's part of our debt exclusion approvals that you've approved in the past at the ballot. That includes projects such as the Sibley Farm purchase, the ladder truck uh, that we purchased, town hall, et cetera. These reserves come back to us by the people that are buying our debt. 
um, and we're allowed to apply them as a revenue source and offset any decrease in our levy. And then the last thing is a water department. The water department reimburses the general government part of the budget, um, and there were some minor changes to their budget, so we altered their reimbursement number. The, the big number at the top that you need to know of is the 82502 That's new money that became available to us since May when you approved the town meeting budget. So we have a couple things we can do. We can, we can uh, reappropriate it, which is what we're going to do. Uh, we can put it into reserves. Um, uh, in, in this case, because we had so many changes in the middle part of this sheet, um, I'm going to explain to you, we, we really needed that revenue uh, and we're going to make good use of it. So the middle part, uh, if you go all the way to, the, to the, the bold line on the bottom where it says 104-112, that's that middle section of additional net expenses that we have. So the top you'll see 82,502 new revenues. As I move to about two-thirds down on the page, you'll see $104,000 of new expenses, and I'll explain how we're going to balance that. Uh, but the, the, I'm going to go through these expenses, uh, these changes. Some are additional expenses, and actually some are reductions in our budget where money actually was freed up due to changes that have occurred since May. So if anyone has any questions, please stop me on any of these line items. I have as much detail as you want, or I have as little detail as you want. So the first one I'm going to talk about is right under that second gray bar of expense adjust adjustments, which is the Smith Vocational. That was Article 2 that you previously voted on. That was the $1,800 of additional funds that you previously approved. That's a new expense for us, or an additional expense, I should say, since May. The reason for that is because the Department of Education does not vote on the tuition rates for out-of-district schools until after we have our town meeting in May. So we get those rates, we come here in the fall, and we readjust our budget to account for that. Now I'm going to go through the 20, 25 or so line items. Some of them are shifting between departments uh, or internally in the same department. For example, the assessors and the treasurer and collector. Anytime we make any change or shifting in a department budget, they only have two line items. They have personnel or wages and salaries, and then they have expenses. Anytime we move money from, say, personnel to expenses or expenses to personnel, it requires a vote of the town meeting, okay? And that's why they're on here. We can't just simply uh, move them around uh, at a vote of the selectmen or on our own. So that's why you see them on here. So I'm going to go through these, and again, stop me if you have any questions. I'll look for your hands. Just raise your hand, and I'll call on you. The first adjustment that we're going to make is in the, the selectmen's budget. Um, some of you are familiar with, the school department over the summer closed Lake Street School. Um, it's actually still in their hands. They have not turned it over to us, but we expect that to happen in the next month or two. And the selectmen and I decided that it would be prudent of us to carry a little bit of funds for utilities just to get us through until the spring uh, in case we have, uh, you know, obviously we have a, uh, security, we have elect electricity to keep on and the heat at a minimum amount. So when they do give that to us, turn over the key, we'll have a little bit of money. That was not relevant to us back in April when we closed the warrant for the May town meeting. So we have a small appropriation for that. The town accountant, there's an adjustment in her budget. Um, she was going to uh, retire as of December 31st, so I accounted for some additional funds for consulting to handle with that transition. That money is no longer needed because she's decided to stay until June 30th. So that actually freed up some money in our budget. The assessors, there's a shift between expenses, and, which is the 51, I mean, sorry, the personnel is 51, and then the expenses of the, the line item below that. Uh, if, if you're not aware, Mary Williams, our principal assessor, she retired over the summer. We hired a new assessor who's here tonight, Linda LeBlanc. And as part of that transition, uh, we had some additional costs moving back and forth between expenses and salary. Um, uh, we had, uh, you know, when someone leaves, leaves us, they take their vac any outstanding benefit time that they have to them. So that's something that's not normally in the budget, but we account for that. Uh, and we had a little bit of consultant money that uh, we freed up uh, to apply to that. Treasure collector, the same thing. We're shifting $3,000 between their professional expenses and their wages. Um, and town council, we had a small reduction in the amount that's allotted for that based on historical spending that freed up a little bit of money. The information technology, we changed private vendors this year, um, and uh, we saved a little bit of money in our contract. Obviously, we have computer networks and 
um, servers and other things, and we have a private vendor that does that for us uh, in terms of repairs and technical assistance. Changing the vendor saved us a little bit of money. We had budgeted a high number of uh, expenses for tax title back in the spring, and after our closeout as of July 1st and looking at previous history, we felt we could lower that, freeing up about $20,000. Our elections and registers, we have some additional costs that we're gonna need for this fiscal year due to the fact that the selectmen in discussions with the town clerk have uh, decided that come next May, the polling hours were gonna go back to 7 a.m. Uh, to 8 p.m. rather than what they are now in terms of 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. So as part of that change and the additional time that's required, there's some additional costs, uh, obviously for poll workers and police details and other expenses that we have associated with holding uh, longer hours uh, at the town election come May. The police department, there was some additional expenses. The ones in bold, I'm gonna highlight. Uh, we had uh, a sergeant that retired this past July, Sergeant Agnew, uh, and we also had an officer, Officer Sullivan, leave us for his hometown. Uh, and those two vacancies have added to, obviously, some overtime requirements. We've had some uh, costs that are associated with the new hiring process, background checks, and other professional consultant uh, costs that we have when hiring new officers. We're working on hopefully closing those two positions by the end of the year. Um, the, they have uniform costs. We also had a dispatcher, Donna Anderson. She retired this year, so we had some transition there. So we had to advertise and hire. And, and in that case, we also had a couple weeks overlap that we normally wouldn't have in our budget. Uh, but we asked her to stay on just a little bit and, and train the new person coming on. So with that, there's some additional costs. The reason they're highlighted in, bla uh, in bold is I've, uh, the, the selectman and I discussed taking free cash or some one-time surplus money that we have to apply it to the budget. Because as you, if you recall on the top, I explained there was $82,000 in new revenue, and then I, I further down below, I have 104 to 105,000 additional expenses to make up that gap. We're gonna use uh, a little bit of free cash that we have, and we feel that we're comfortable doing that one-time adjustment because those expenses in the police department aren't a recurring expense that we're gonna have every year. You know, we, ha we haven't had officers retire or leave in a long time, and having that transition and the additional costs associated with that, uh, we don't feel they'll be there. It's a recurring expense that we need to carry over year. So at the end of the day, when I get through all this, you'll see at the very bottom, you'll see a zero at the bottom. That means the new revenues and the new expenses that we have are gonna cancel, cancel out. <clears throat> so moving on into OTIS, that's our Office of Development and Inspection Services, that's our Board of Health, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, uh, Zoning Board, uh, and, uh, and our, uh, we have some uh, inspectors, on-call inspectors there as well. Uh, our town planner, who we've been sharing with the town of Leicester this past May, went back to Leicester full time. So several years ago, the town of Leicester reached out to us uh, when, uh, when they were looking to have uh, some, they had money problems, they were looking for some savings. Um, they sent their planner to us uh, to fill a gap here that we had, and that position, the actual position was vacant when I came up to the town administrator position. And Michelle Buck, who had been our town planner for the last three years, uh, worked part-time in Spencer and part-time in Leicester. Well, we didn't know until after the May town meeting that occurred in Leicester that they voted appropriations to take her back full time and fund her position full time. So it vacated a position here. So what we're doing with that money in the interim is we've hired a consultant out of Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. They're a public agency, um, a quasi-public agency that's a regional planning commission out of Springfield. They do a lot of grant work for us. They do our community development block grants. For example, some of the projects we work on are Mechanic Street, that construction, that came a, from a grant. So Pioneer Valley Planning Commission offers a lot of services. One of them is grant writing and grant administration, and the other they offer is planning services. So we are carrying some additional costs for that until we see where we are come spring in the budget and see wh how we'll restore uh, or revisit that town planner position come spring. The transfer station, we, made, we need to make an adjustment in salary based on changes that the selectmen and staff have made uh, moving into this year. The Council on Aging, this may be one that people want to talk about. Uh, we've uh, set aside $30,000 of the new revenue and with some of the money that's being freed up here to set aside to move our senior center where we previously were renting at the Fish and Game Club to move that into the Maple Street School. So since I've been here, the senior center's been in, I think, four locations uh, all rented and there hasn't been a permanent uh, structure for them. 
since I've been here, and along with the selectmen and, and the council on aging and, and our director, we've been looking at permanent solutions uh, to providing a space for our seniors. Our seniors are population, I think, is a little bit under 25% here in town of our overall population. There's a lot of need there and a lot of programs we'd like to offer. So looking back a couple years, uh, when the Maple Street School um, became, uh, came back to the town, if you recall, the school department with their budget crisis turned that school back to us. We began looking at that as a, as a possible solution for a permanent location uh, for our senior center. In addition to that, possibly other community uses, whether we outgrow this building or we have other uses within our community, nonprofits or other, that would like to take advantage of that space. If you're familiar with some of the senior centers around us, old school buildings are commonly converted to senior centers. I know Paxton, Sturbridge, Charlton, uh, Northbridge is a town I'm familiar with. They're all former school structures. So Maple Street seemed to make sense for us. Um, the basement floor there has a, has a nice space that has tables, uh, has handicap accessible parking, elevator, bathrooms. It also has the cafeteria. Um, so we thought that would be a good uh, solution. So a couple years ago, um, actually last year, uh, about 15 months ago, that was included in one of the override questions that you had in terms of adding expenses because at that time when the school was coming back to us, we didn't have additional revenue available. The only way we could do that was through additional appropriations with your authorization. And also as part of those questions, as you recall, we had some, some dire needs and some dire cutbacks that we had to make, town hall, we lost the highway position, fire department training, and other as part of all of that override. The only way we could maintain those things and then add the senior center was with additional funds. So that didn't happen, unfortunately. But the selectmen and myself and the Council on Aging have continued to work on and look for other creative solutions. So we have a solution here that we propose to you tonight as part of this budget change, and it doesn't involve any additional taxes, uh, uh, any increase to the levy, uh, or authorization other than a town meeting vote tonight to shift money or reappropriate additional revenue that's come to us as of May 1st. So we do have a lot of needs in our community. We have a lot of uh, places we'd like to take advantage of any new revenue we have. The reason that we've allocated th these funds to the senior centers because of the lease that was running out from the place that they were renting over the summer, uh, if, if we didn't apply any funds to that use, there would be no place for our seniors at all. So it seemed like a good fit. We've looked at that building for a while um, as, a, as a permanent solution, and as part of that, we've allocated $30,000. That $30,000 comes from an analysis that we performed when evaluating the cost that the Spencer East Brookville Regional School District had when they occupied that building. So those monies go towards electricity, they go towards um, the heat of the building, um, and, and that's where the $30,000 comes from. So if it's approved as part of this budget, again, no additional taxes. Um, and our seniors can have a permanent location moving forward. So um, if there's no any questions, I'll move on to the next item. And I also, I can answer any questions at the end. The next line item is also in the Council of Aging budget. That is $5,000 to increase our senior work program. We have a senior work program that some of the other towns around us do as well, where we set aside uh, some funds. Typically, it's been about $15,000 where uh, taxpayers um, of, uh, that meet the age requirement, uh, our elderly or our senior population along with uh, meeting low income guidelines, they can work off a portion of their taxes up to $1,000 by uh, working uh, about 120 hours in a town hall department or any other town department providing assistance or working on projects. So it's been a great program for us and a lot of people have taken advantage of it. Uh, such the, that we had uh, five or so additional applicants this year. We'd like to fund those folks and help them. Uh, it's a it's a win-win for everybody. They get to work off some of their taxes, and, and obviously we get some extra work uh, done. So in order to meet that demand, we've asked to apply five thousand dollars additional. That would take that line item from fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. The next line item, veteran services, that is to apply an additional $10,000 to the benefits portion of their expense budget. Uh, we have a lot of veterans that come back to us in the need. This money goes to those folks that have come back that meet, low, again, low income guidelines that need help with heat uh, and uh, medical um, and other uh, expenses. They work through our veterans agent and um, and the expenses, if they are approved under statutory state guidelines, we will um, give them reimbursement for those expenses 
And because of the demand that we have had in the last few years, we are continuously adding to that budget. So it's a good problem to have by putting money to it. We know that we're addressing a need, uh, and that's one of the things we'd like to do here tonight. The next line item is in our library services budget. That's to apply, uh, apply an additional $1,075 to their subscription and book requirement in order to meet the state matching grant uh, requirement of 15%, uh, I believe, of their, or 16% of their budget being applied to that expense. We had some savings in our employee benefits. That's the next line item down, $15,000. That's uh, our workman's comp, which doesn't come in until after July 1st. Again, it's a number that we guess in May. We have an accurate number come uh, July, and that actually freed up 15000 or so. And our last line item is the general insurance number. Our liability insurance, auto insurance, et cetera, had an increase of about 4700 and that's all of the line items. So are there any questions on any particular department? There's staff here tonight. Myself can also answer any questions. If not, I'll get into how we balance and get a zero at the bottom. And I'll, also, I'll stick around at, at the end of the night, too, if anyone has any questions. But uh, you can see the 104000 that is the net from the reductions or the savings that we had in some areas in our budget, offset with those increases that I mentioned. We add those to the 1800 above from the Smith Vocational, gives us a total of 105,000. That's the first number below the bold line at the bottom. That's our total uh, number of uh, new expenses. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we then are taking the $31,000 in one time surplus, that's free cash, to apply to those police department expenses that I said that were not occurring. And that gets us to 74,922 uh, in terms of our net expenses that we have left to fit into our budget. Looking at the very top, as I described to you in the beginning, we had about $82,000 in new revenue. So that new revenue being above the net exp change in expenses leaves us about 7,500 bucks at the bottom. We're gonna apply that to a reserve that we apply uh, to people when they, uh, when they obtain an abatement. Uh, we have a reserve fund for that so that when we, uh, we adjust our tax levy uh, based on any abatement awards. So that cancels everything out, and that's how we ended up with a net zero budget. So we're not asking for any additional tax levy. We are asking, asking for a little bit of additional appropriation, but that's because of the new revenue that was uh, award, allotted to us at the very top. So that's the whole reason of you know, rescinding Article 3, approving a new Article 4. There was just so many changes that we've had since May. Sometimes we only have, for example, the one in Article 2 that you saw, and there's no need for this other stuff. But because we had so many, we felt that it would be great to give you as much information as possible. Uh, we're an open book. We want to give you that information, give you an opportunity to discuss it if, if you like. Uh, it's, it's your tax dollars going to the specific departments and addressing their needs so that they can provide the services that you all desire. So are there any questions? OK, thanks for your time. And I'm going to turn it back to the moderator. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. That was a, um, a most appreciated and concise explanation of the budget. All right, so the question before you then is essentially to rework the budget. We'll do that through a combination of moving funds around as explained by Mr. Gaudet. It's a majority vote. Uh, any questions? Last chance. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it by a majority vote. Article 5. Article 5 is a question which is similar to what we just went through with Articles 3 and 4 for the town budget. This one concerns the water department budget. And what we will do in Article 4 will be to rescind Article 15 of the annual town meeting, which was the annual budget for the water department, conditional upon approving of Article 6, which will be a reworking of that budget. So the motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 5 as printed in the warrant. Motion is by Mr. Fritz and seconded by Mr. Stevens. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions or comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those that are opposed, and the ayes have it by a majority vote. Article 6, 
Article 6 is to rework the Water Department budget to appropriate $1,370,610 for the Water Department and to fund the appropriation with the transfer from receipts and revenues from the Water Enterprise Fund, that's their free cash, collected by the Water Department for this coming fiscal year. The Water Enterprise Fund, excuse me, is not their free cash. That's their, their ongoing account. And to also authorize indirect costs. The total of this amounts to about $7,200 in additional funds. So the motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 6 as printed in the warrant. Motion is by Mr. Fritz, seconded by Mr. Stevens. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Questions or comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those pose, and the ayes have it, and the motion carries. Article 7. Article 7 is an article to transfer $1,000 from free cash to the sick leave buyback account. This will balance the account uh, for outlays which were occasioned by the two retirements that uh, Mr. Gaudet just spoke about. This money will be met by appropriating and transferring from previously certified and available free cash. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 7 as printed in the warrant. It requires a majority vote. The motion is by Mr. Chris Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Gary Woodbury. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions or comments? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it. The motion carries. Article 8. Article 8 is an article to replenish a reserve account for the Board of Health site cleanup in the amount of $5,000 and to meet this appropriation by transferring from free cash. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 8 as printed in the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Chris Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Gary Woodbury. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions? Comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it. The motion carries. Article 9. Article 9 involves a transfer of $25,000 from the Water Department free cash, which is called retained earnings, to an upgrade capital account. This requires a majority vote. The motion I have is I move to approve the reading and waive, and approve, waive, the reading and approve Article 9 as printed in the warrant Motion is by Mr. Bo Fritz, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Co questions, comments? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion carries. Article 10. Article 10 cleans, uh, cleans up two older capital accounts and puts money into a new capital account, and this involves the Water Department. Capital account transfer of $11,732, roughly, and $134,517, roughly. Both of these to go into the Capital Efficiency Plan account from the existing Water Department capital account, so strictly an intradepartmental intra transfer. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 10 as printed in the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Fritz, seconded by Mr. Stevens. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions or comments? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it. The motion carries. Article 11. 
Article 11 involves uh, transfers from the sewer department capital accounts into and from their retained earnings into another capital account, which involves, I believe, clarifier upgrade project. Um, the motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 11 as printed in the warrant. Motion is by Mr. Gary Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Chris Woodbury. Requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval of the transfer. Questions, comments? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And the question carries by a majority vote. Article 11. Article 11 is the capital expenditure account that we do every year. This involves $350,000 to fund various capital improvements as listed in the warrant for the library, the fire department, the highway department, and the town hall. And you can see the individual items there. The funding will be done with $270,000 from free cash and $80,000 from the landfill cap repair capital account. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 12 as printed in the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Gary Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Chris Woodbury. It requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And the, the motion carries by a majority vote. Article 13 is a request to transfer from free cash $14,000 to the Town Hall Boiler Replacement Project, additional expenses that were incurred in the new boiler that will keep us warm in the winter when we use this great hall. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 13 as printed in the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Gary Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Chris Woodbury. Requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Questions or comments? Yes. Barbara. Uh, Barbara Grissel, 87 Jolly Ram. Uh, how much free cash was left over at the end of FY14? Am I in the right year? The end of last year. How much free cash was left? Because we just spent quite a bit of it here. Mr. Goddard. Which, which means that the budget was overstated. If there's free cash left over. So there's, there's two different free caches that we've used since May. So the free cash that we used in May um, was left over from actually the previous year. So what we did was in the fall of 2014, we had money that was available to us at the close of the previous fiscal year as of July 1. So we spent some of that money in the fall of 2014, and the remainder of that money we spent in the spring in May. So the remainder of the money that was left over from the previous fiscal year actually had a balance of zero at July 1st. The big expense that we had in, in, uh, in uh, free cash was, if you recall, we used about $350,000 to balance snow and ice, and then we had some other money to balance, uh, balance the budget. So we had about 966000 from the previous fiscal year, spent some in the fall, balanced with snow and ice and then other capital projects in the spring. So that money that was available to us at the end of fiscal year 14 had a zero as of July 1st. So, but we were, the money that was available to us, we could use back in May, okay? So the new money that you voted tonight is money that's available to us in free cash as of July 1st, 2015. So that's money that's available to us at the closeout of June 30, 2015 or FY15. So we're now into FY 2016. So the money that was either surplus revenue or was um, uh, uh, money that was turned back by our departments was about the same thing. It was just, uh, just about a million dollars. So that money then became available to us as of July, or once the Department of Revenue approved it in October. We now can use it now in the fall, which we have here. So, so you had a million dollars. Right. So we have, 
Right. So now after the motions that you have tonight, you'll have $685,000 that will, that will be available. We spent two seventy here. Right. And we also spent the one on the sick leave fund. And we also spent uh, five on the board of health cleanup, the 14 here. So I think, I think it was a total of uh, $321,000 in free cash, which is going to leave us about 680 or so in the spring. So we need that money, right? Because we, we will have our, another capital plan come spring. We also have to balance the fiscal year 2016 budget. And whatever we don't use to offset the snow uh, deficit will be available to us for capital projects. So. so what I'm saying is your budget. Microphone, please. Yep. Your budget appears to be a little overstated because you get all this left over every year. Every year you have free cash left over. Correct. And then the next year, you use it. Correct. Why don't we get the numbers in the right years? Because the, so the, the, what the free cash, if you're familiar in the private sector, that's retained earnings, right? Or it's undesignated balance. So at the end of your closeout of a given period, it's any money that you have above your expenses. So if, for example, last year we had a $20 million budget and our departments turned back several hundred thousand dollars, you know, 10 in the assessors and five in highway and two in police, all that money gets added up. That makes up one portion of our free cash. The second portion is any additional revenue. So if we estimated our excise tax, for example, was a million dollars, but we ended up with 1.2 million, that $200,000 at the end of the fiscal year becomes free cash. So you don't know what free cash is in a given fiscal year. You don't know until you close out June 30th, we have our audit over the summer, we send our undesignated surplus to the Department of Revenue, they say, okay, you have $900,000 in surplus. Here you go. It's now available to us. So we're using a portion of it tonight, and then we'll use a portion of it in the fall, in the, I'm sorry, in the spring, to, just like we did last year, to balance snow and ice and to use for capital projects again. So. It, it's been the process Barbara, since, do you want well, since before I was born. <laughs> I mean, I was on the finance yep. every year, and I know that's the way you do it. Okay. So In terms of, um, I guess I'm trying to figure out what you're looking for. So at the end of June 30th this year, the Department of Revenue approved a certain amount of free cash. It's available to us, and that's one of the reasons why we have this fall town meeting. One is to um, adjust the budget, as you saw, based on new money or, or new expenses that have come up. And then the other is to address capital needs or su uh, supplement reserve funds that, that need to be replenished, which a couple of them tonight did. So some of the capital things, the reason we're not waiting until the spring on them, they need to be done now. For example, the fire department won the $122,000 as a matching grant. If we don't allocate those funds now, we lose $122,000. So that's why we're not waiting until the spring for that one. Is that maybe one of your questions? It's almost like we're creating a savings account within our budget. Okay. And that is what Department of Revenue recommends, and that's what every town does. So the Department of Revenue recommends that at the end of every close out of every fiscal year, that hopefully you have about 5% of your budget in free cash because in, you, you want to have money that's available for exactly what we're doing, apply to capital projects. There's no line item or a budget for $500,000 every year, and then in, in that we apply to capital. We only do capital projects in this town either through free cash or through debt exclusions. So that's one of the reasons that I, they ask you to, to have that. The other is because you need that money to apply to different reserve funds. Everyone's heard of our rainy day fund, right? So our general stabilization, again, that's another number. That's the Department of Revenue recommends you have 10% of your budget in reserves and stabilization. We currently only have 5%, and that's a million dollars in our general stabilization rainy day fund. So we're right where we want to be in terms of free cash in extra revenue that we didn't account for and money that's getting turned back in, in, in that million dollars. That's 5% of our overall, actually it's under the $22 million budget that you see here, okay? Um, so that number represents the same number that was raised in free cash back in 2008, the year before the economy crashed. So when 2008 happened, our free cash, the money that was getting turned back or extra revenue decreased because the, 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 the state of Massachusetts was cutting our revenue. They cut our state aid. People weren't buying as many cards. So we didn't have as much excise tax. So from 2008 over to about three years ago, our free cash dipped from one million down to 200,000. We've been working real hard with the finance committee, our staff, and, and looking at our revenues and our structure of our budget to try to get that number back up to where DOR wants it at 5% so that we have money for free cash 
to do capital projects. If we don't have any free cash, the items that you see right here need to be bought. And the only way we could get that if we didn't have any free cash would be to ask you to increase the tax levy through a debt exclusion. So by having that 5% of free cash, you're able to apply and balance the budget when you have deficits. You're able to um, supplement your reserve funds, build up your stabilization, and then avoid taxpayer increases through the tax levy to buy a fire truck or to buy uh, things that we're doing in here. The, if we didn't have free cash, we would be asking you to raise the taxes for these items. Uh, microphone, please. Microphone. Yep. How much is in stabilization? So the question was how much is in stabilization? So the stabilization is our rainy day fund. You hear that term often. That's our general stabilization fund. We have $1 million. Again, that represents 5% of our budget. That's half of what the Department of Revenue recommends. They recommend that. Correct. Correct. Yep. So we, they recommend us having about 10%, which would be about $2 million. So. When we finally get to a point where we don't have as many capital needs, we can shuffle some towards that rainy day fund. We're, we're, we're good. Many years we have transferred from the free cash into the stabilization, Correct. which again is your savings account. Yep. So it's just something to watch. Be aware. Okay, appreciate the comment. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. So if I can sum all that up for you, the question I think from Barbara was, why aren't we leaner and meaner with the budget so we don't have such a big surplus, so much free cash? And the answer is the Department of Revenue says best fiscal policy is to plan your budget so you wind up with a 5% surplus at the end of the year to meet unexpected contingencies. And uh, this Finance Committee and this Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Gaudet, uh, has done a wonderful job to get us to that mark. Further questions? Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The question carries by a majority vote. Article 14. Article 14 is a, is a motion to amend the personnel bylaws effective January 1, 2016 with regard to dental health and life insurance benefits for non-union town employees. Uh, the motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 14 as printed on the warrant. The motion is by Mr. Stevens, seconded by Mr. Pepe. Requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. Sometimes we are uh, compelled to change the language in our regulations to conform to, to federal law. And in, th in this case, the according to federal law, benefits are to begin on the first day of employment. So we need to change those, the wording in our personnel bylaws. So we don't have a lot of choice, <laughs> like so many of the things we do, but this is to keep it all nice and tidy in agreement with, with uh, overriding legislation. Questions or comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Question carries by a majority vote. Article 15. Article 15 is another revision to the personnel bylaws. And this one concerns sick leave incentive and personal days. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 15 as printed in the warrant. Motion is by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Mr. Pepe. Requires a majority vote. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. This is a housekeeping matter. This is to, to change the wording in our bylaws so that they are consistent with the, with the labor contracts. So that this is just making sure that we, are, we have we're using the same language in all of our uh, em, employee benefits and, and, and statements of of regulations. So there's no change in number there, it's just a change in wording. Questions, comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Question carries by a majority vote. Article 16. Article 16 is the last article for the night. This is a further amendment to the personnel bylaws to create a new position of police detail officer 
within the compensation schedule. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading and approve Article 16 as printed on the warrant. Motion is by Mr. Stevens, seconded by Mr. Pepe. Requires a majority vote. This is effective again uh, January 1, 2016. Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee recommends approval. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. We currently do not have the position in our bylaws of police detail officer. Officers you see on construction details or, or traffic details have been typically uh, filled by a, a current uh, patrol officers. We now have uh, at least one uh, re retiree and uh, may have others. And so in order to take advantage of retired police officers who would be interested in filling in the, for these, these details, we need to create this position. Uh, in talking with, uh, with our town administrator, it's just I was reminded that we, the officers, um, I should say that the police details are, are first dibs are with current officers. This will um, enable us to use retired police officers if, if there are no interests among the current force. And third, we would go out of town for, for an officer or for a, a detail person. This is just to give us a little more flexibility and opportunity to use some talent that we have retired talent in our midst. Questions or comments? Ready for the vote. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries by a majority vote. Thank the you. chair will entertain a motion to dissolve the meeting by Mr. Hicks. Seconded. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Good night and please drive safely. Thank you. <laughs>